Howdy CSers, this is Professor Kaufman, and what follows is a short video demonstrating the remote graphical login capabilities that the CSA, uh, CSE IT staff have provided to access their machines. I've Googled here for CSE IT UMN in order to find the homepage for CSE IT. I'll punch that now, and we'll start out by looking at some of the links that are present on the classrooms and labs. This is documentation that is worthwhile reading, but we're most interested uh, right now in the remote access capabilities. We'll explore two of those in these videos, uh, the Fast X3, uh, which allows you to graphically log into individual machines, and the Virtual Online Linux Environment, VOL for short, which allows you to log in graphically through your web browser to a pool of virtual machines. Machines. I'll punch Fast X3 uh, to begin with here, and the documentation that's present here uh, is certainly useful, although somewhat uh, limited. Uh, instead, what I'll turn your attention to uh, is the following. Uh, as you would back up and find this list of CSE Labs computers, uh, you'll know that down here, for instance, in this Keller 1250 lab, uh, there are a bunch of machines, uh, 37 in fact, uh, that are used for in-person meetings. What's less obvious from this particular documentation that's expressed uh, in that FASTX3 is that you don't actually need to use SSH to access these. You don't have to sit down at them either. Instead, you can merely copy this web address, and since I want to use this page uh, again in a minute, uh, I'll open up a new tab and punch this in up here. Uh, I'm going to change the machine uh, just a little bit here. Well, we'll go to machine number 9 instead. There are 37 of these numbered 01 to 37. Uh, and if I just punch that into the web browser, I'll get prompted for some login information. Uh, this is a really brilliant system that will allow you, without need to do any SSHing or anything, uh, to access that individual machine straight through your web browser. So the username here is your X500. Uh, mine used to be cough0095, uh, but I'm Kaufman now. And down here, I want to punch in my X500. Uh, you notice uh, kindly the uh, my web browser, Google Chrome, is attempting to insert a password. But I'm just going to punch it in manually here. Uh, same password here as you would use to access all of the other University of Minnesota machines uh, and all the UMN uh, systems, uh, uh, Canvas and so forth. So I'll do an SSH login here. This will maybe take just a second as it's authenticating the password. And then I should get a prompt uh, for Duo. Uh, this is the two-step uh, authentication. So I'll punch one in here because I want to push a notification to go on my phone. Uh, I'll submit. This will be silent except for the fact that my phone just buzzed saying that uh, it wants approval to log in over here. I'll do so here and then get uh, the following screen. Uh, in some cases, Chrome or other web browsers may want to try and save that one as a password, not really necessary. And this welcome message usually displays the first time you log into an individual machine via this mechanism, uh, but it doesn't have much to it. Uh, this sort of unimpressive thing uh, can be moved through by punching the plus here to start a session. In FastX3, which is what we're using here, you can pick between either the GNOME desktop environment or the XFCE environment. Uh, I prefer XFCE because it's a little bit more traditional, uh, but the nice part about logging into Linux systems is oftentimes there are several different GUI interfaces you can select from. Not so on your Macs and your Windows, uh, but the mouse uh, will do for me for right now. After selecting that, I will launch the section. This may take just a moment to, to fire up, uh, but over here then I get a GUI desktop uh, complete with a background I selected uh, to inspire me whenever I go on. Uh, you can see uh, then down here I've you know, set up things, a bunch of icons, for instance, to watch web browsers, uh, start up VS Code, uh, start editors of choice in terminals and so forth, uh, or browse my home directory. Uh, for instance, I have a folder on my desktop over here that's uh, for Seaside 2021, and this interface will be be almost exactly the same as if you were sitting at the machine in person instead. And it's a far cry from an SSH connection to it, uh, which is important but covered in another video, uh, but somewhat more limited in its ability to provide a useful GUI interface. Uh, so just explore a little bit. For instance, if I double click on this folder, I get this thing to pop up over here. Uh, and you can see I've got some Lab 1 code in there that I might work on. 
If I jump in there uh, and uh, double click on this thing, it'll open up whatever the default text editor is so I can start editing code over here. Should I want to compile and run that stuff, uh, then I can open up a terminal down over here and go over here. And importantly, this is all happening within a browser tab. So if I wanted to go back and read something else over here, uh, I can uh, jump over to another tab and uh, we're good to go. I wish I had had such a convenient way to log into computing systems at CSE Labs when I was a student, uh, but uh, you know that was long ago when networks were not quite so fast uh, nor robust as they were by these days. Uh, just to illustrate as well, uh, I have an LS capability over here to list the files in the directory over here, or if I click over here, uh, I can do some things uh, like delete this line over here. Uh, let's see maybe get rid of this line, uh, for instance, and punch enter. Uh, you have to be a little bit careful because this is happening within a web browser window. Um, so uh, normally you'd press control S to save things over here. But as I type uh, control S here, uh, oh, I guess it is grabbing uh, the key binding over here. Uh, in some cases, uh, certain key bindings may be intercepted by the web browser to do stuff. Like if I remember right, uh, control T will get intercepted by the web browser open a new tab rather than passing it through to your editor down there uh, to do whatever a control T might be. Um, so this can be a little bit inconvenient. And the other drawback of these graphical connections is they're network intensive. So if you don't have a strong connection uh, to uh, the UMN network on maybe a weak wireless signal, this thing can stutter uh, and stall not pretty badly. Uh, so the lag oftentimes kills the experience. Uh, but me being on the university now network right now, this thing is snappy uh, and responsive. Um, so there's an alternative then to logging into individual uh, CS machines. And again, uh, there are lots of those listed over here, not just in Keller 250, but Keller 1200 uh, and uh, various other Keller Hall machines. Make sure you log into Linux machines as the Windows and any Macs that are listed over here are not going to have this FastX capability. Uh, one alternative to this uh, is to make use of the Vol system. Now this is not a physical machine you can sit down at, but instead is a little cloud of uh, servers uh, that can be spun up and give a similar graphical experience. Uh, so if you forget, uh, there is a z.umn shortcut for this, so it's z.umn.edu uh, slash vol2d. Uh, the 2D part there is important because there is a sort of more graphically capable version of Vol, uh, the 3D version, but you should not use that for most of your classes unless your instructor indicates, yeah, this is a graphics class and we're going to use that. Uh, it's not that you'll lose any capabilities with the 2D one, instead certain software uh, like the Valgrind Memory Checker works a little bit funny on those 3D nodes uh, and may spuriously report errors. So same basic uh, protocol here, uh, punch login. Uh, I have my uh, name and username and password pre-populated in this case. I'll still need to do authenticate. I'm just getting buzzed by my phone that I should authenticate. So that's approved. Uh, don't bother to cache any of this stuff. Uh, rather than a plus, I have a launch session. And because Vol runs in a slightly older version of FastX, you only have access to the XFCE mouse uh, desktop environment. Totally fine. I'll launch that up uh, and get myself another section here by this time with the mouse background. Aside from that, everything here is uh, sort of as advertised before. A couple notes about ergonomics on this. Uh, aside from the keyboard intercept uh, part of this, uh, it is possible that you might change your browser window. Uh, for instance, if right now this thing's full screen and if I drag it over, then I get these irritating little scroll bars over here uh, as this desktop uh, was sized to my uh, full size window and just is not uh, uh, able to display it now. Uh, if that happens or for some reason you know you change displays, there's a little hidden drop down up here now with a couple different options. And one of them uh, over here uh, is to resize the window, uh, the desktop environment, to the size of your browser window. So you can see here now I have my bottom window. The scroll bars from the browser have disappeared and all's well. I can, for instance, click up here to access the software that's on here and so forth. If I um, resize again, uh, since I have this little option to resize this uh, desktop environment to reflect the browser window, uh, then th that will stay um, a good. 
there are also some options over here uh, to uh, upload and download files uh, associated with uh, the uh, remote machine. Uh, so for instance, if I wanted to download some stuff from the Seaside 2021 over here, uh, for instance, this new program.c or this hello.c, I can punch this and this will allow me to save it to my local uh, machine instead. On the other hand, if I had something on my local machine and wanted to get it onto the remote machine, the little uh, let's see, cloud icon up here, which is meant to reflect an upload, if you punch that, uh, and this will allow you to upload something, uh, for instance, Ah, oh, see, I don't know if I have anything in here that I actually want up there. We'll just upload this little random uh, source code that's uh, Emacs uh, source code. Uh, so like that thing. Uh, and you can see here, uh, now that single cells.l, it's now in the directory that I was in over here, which I think is uh, Seaside 2021. Uh, and I could edit it on the remote machine. Uh, so for instance, uh, clicking off this thing, uh, if I look in here on my remote machine in Seaside 2021, uh, see, no, so that's the one on the desktop. I got to find um, the one that's instead uh, in my home directory here. Let's see, oh, the window might be, okay, it's just uh, lagging a little bit. Uh, find Seaside 2021. Uh, there it is, single cells, uh, dot L. So it uploaded successfully from my home computer uh, to the CSE Labs uh, system. So that should be enough to get you started on uh, this very convenient FastX connection. Um, students who don't want to walk into a public lab are still able to access, access those machines very readily uh, through it. Uh, some other videos will cover other remote login uh, capabilities, such as SSHing through a terminal, and also the remote editing capabilities of VS Code. So stay tuned for those if you're curious. Take care, Tell us see you in class.